Hello everyone, AlzboHD here with a brand new video for you here today. In this video, we will be checking out some of the absolute worst countries to play as in Europe Universalis 4, with horrible national ideas, awful starting positions, and downright dreadful expansion opportunities, all of these nations are underpowered and incredibly difficult to play, ranging from undevelopable frozen wastelands to pre-feudal and impoverished vassal states, these nations will take patience and skill to play successfully. Let's get started with number 10. Starting off our list of worst nations in EU4 is the worst prince in the Holy Roman Empire, Baden, at number 10. What makes Baden so bad, you might ask? Good question, take a look on the right of your screen. Baden has unquestionably the worst national ideas in the entire Holy Roman Empire, including having reduced fort maintenance as a national tradition, despite the fact they don't even own a fort. Literally the only decent national idea they have is the extra diplomat, and you won't receive it until later in the game once you've filled an idea set. Even worse, Baden borders Austria and the free city of Ravensburg, severely limiting expansion opportunities and making expanding in the AHRE even more of a Voltaire's nightmare than it usually is. Despite all of these setbacks, however, Baden is still in Germany and can thus receive many institutions for free, convert to Protestantism, become an elector or emperor of the HRE, and can even form Germany. Why would you want to do these things as Baden when you can choose literally any other prince and have a more enjoyable campaign though? Just pick Ulm instead. Climbing the Caucasian mountains into number 9 on our list is the unfortunately positioned nation of Georgia. Stuck between Russian, Ottoman, and Persian Timurid expansion, this nation is unlikely to survive long as an AI or even a reasonably skilled player. Why would Imereti or Satsashki, the other Georgian cultured minor nations, reform Georgia you might ask? Good question. There is no reason except for obtaining a new flag, name, and map color. This is because Georgia's national ideas are absolute trash, and are literally the same as the other Georgian minor nations without any bonuses. Featuring miserable ideas that include reducing construction cost, increasing air birth rates, reducing infantry cost, and reducing war exhaustion by a pitiful 0 0.02 each month, Georgia is a country that had potential, but was unfortunately poorly crafted. This is especially the case considering the moderate challenge of reforming it in the first place. If you can stomach their awful ideas in geography, Georgia can achieve two achievements. The first, David the Builder, requires you to form Georgia as Emirati and fill all own provinces with buildings. The second, Georgia on my mind, requires you to own the Georgian territories, the isolated island of South Georgia, and the territories associated with the modern US state of Georgia and North America. Note that this achievement does not actually require you to play as Georgia or the Georgian cultured nations, thus allowing you to obtain it with far better and more enjoyable countries. Coming up next on our list of awful states is the Venetian vassal of Corfu at number 8. Corfu is so bad that its only province has both the wrong religion and the wrong culture, being Greek instead of Lombard, and Orthodox instead of Catholic. In addition to this, Corfu has a very low development, is a vassal of Venice, is surrounded by the Ottomans, and has absolutely horrendous national ideas. The only good ideas, increased army morale and the extra merchant, are offset by the laughable fort defense bonuses in a country with an unaffordable fort, bonuses to cultural genuk conversion, and national tax bonuses in a nation clearly designed with trade in mind. If you want to play an island in the Mediterranean that is actually viable, you could pick literally any other nation. I would recommend the Knights for their amazing ideas, and Cyprus for their ability to form Jerusalem, which the Knights can do as well. If you do insist on playing this sad excuse for a country, you can aim for the Corfu achievement, which requires you to revoke five cores from a nation in a peace deal. Good luck, you're going to need it. Shooting up the list like a geyser in a sulfurous cesspit is Iceland at number 7 on our list of worst nations in EU4. Releasable at the starting date by Norway or fumable by any country that has less than four cities and a core on both of the Icelandic provinces, forming Iceland is a downgrade in more ways than one. First of all, Iceland's national ideas are the absolute dreadful and underpowered generic idea group, which is a shame given their immense potential for unique flavor. Secondly, Iceland's position as a frigid and isolated island will make institution spread almost impossible and render forcing institutions a nightmare, as development costs will be quite high. Outside of the cool name and interesting dark map color, Iceland has nothing to offer Norway, the most likely candidate to form them, as becoming Iceland will make you miss out on many unique events and offers you nothing in return. They don't even receive events related to Life Ericsson, exploration, or colonization, and they receive no interesting raiding mechanics like many other historically seafaring nations. If you do end up playing as Iceland for roleplay purposes though, you can form Scandinavia. 
but there are other countries that can form it more easily and effectively, rendering Iceland the Nordic black sheep of EU4. At least you can eat Hakarth. Meandering their way onto our list of worst nations is the East African microstate of Janjiro at number 6, sandwiched between Adal, Ethiopia, Ethiopia's vassals, and substantially stronger heretical nations, Janjiro has the supreme misfortune of being the only fetishist nation in the Coptic and Muslim neighborhood. A poor nation of only four development, Janjiro additionally suffers from an awful economy and the same terrible generic national ideas we've seen in the previous example of Iceland. If you can manage to break out of your imprisoned position and beat back Ethiopia or Adal, you will also have to contend with the Oromo migration event that will switch the culture and religion of almost all of your Horn of African provinces. This is actually a good thing, however, as it will transform Adal's extremely difficult to convert Islamic provinces to the fetishist faith painlessly. If you want to play a challenging nation in the Horn of Africa that is actually enjoyable and has unique ideas, you'd be much better off playing either Simeon, also known as the only Jewish nation in the game, or Kaffa to Janjiro's immediate west, which allows you to actually obtain an achievement. Up next at number 5 on our list is the primitive and technologically backward Central African tribe of Busaga. Starting without feudalism and a severely stunted technology of two in every category, Busaga is a strong contender for the worst nation in continental Africa. Incredibly isolated and located on the shores of Lake Victoria, the likelihood of feudalism or any other institution arriving here before the 1800s is incredibly unlikely. What this means is that Busaga will have to expand either by conquest westwards or by colonization eastwards to secure a coast in order to access tools more advanced than sticks and stones. While normally expansion would be possible in this way, Busaga also starts in an interregnum that can last many years and which prevents you from declaring war and expanding through neighboring territory. I haven't even gotten started on their awful ideas yet either, which include highlights like increased air chances, quicker looting speed, and an amazing 10% discount on infantry costs. The Great Lakes region of Central Africa is actually an incredibly fun and overlooked region to play in, but any player looking for a campaign here would behoove themselves to pick literally any other country in the neighborhood, or at the very least, a country that actually starts with a ruler and isn't the early medieval equivalent of anarchist Somalia. Migrating their way into number 4 in our list of worst EU4 nations are the tribal councils hailing from the frozen wastelands of eastern Siberia. If you enjoy starting without feudalism and fancy the idea of developing institutions on top of littoral glaciers, these tribes are perfect for you. Not only do they begin the game in an incredibly technologically handicapped position, but these Siberian tribes must also reform their country before accessing the benefits and mechanics of monarchies, republics, or hordes. If you have the Dharma DLC, you can reform your government via the government reform page, but if you don't have this DLC, you will have to fill out either economic or administrative ideas completely in order to transform your tribe into a more modern nation. As if this wasn't bad enough, the Siberian tribes also have rather terrible national ideas, with the worst consisting of increasing prestige from land battles, plus 5% their reinforcement speed, and an hilarious plus 15% for defense modifier, and a tribe unlikely to even be able to afford creating and maintaining castles in the first place. There is hope though, as all four of these Siberian tribes can migrate every few years, and have the rare chance of discovering gold and becoming insanely rich before collapsing to rampant inflation. To be fair, even though these tribes are objectively awful, a campaign as any of these tribes is incredibly rewarding, as you can reverse history by conquering and colonizing your way westwards through Russia and punching your way into the North Sea. Located deep within the malaria-infested jungles of the Congo Basin is Chio, at number 3 on our list of worst nations in Europe Universalis. If you've made it this far into the video, you might know what to expect by now. Our checklist so far includes non-feudal starts, technological barbarity, isolation, and terrible ideas. Luckily for you, my viewer, is that Tio not only has all four of the essential criteria needed for a well-rounded and god-awful nation, but also starts trapped as an enclave and surrounded by Congo and their vassal Loango. Even if you manage to ally Cuba or Yaka before Congo inevitably consumes them, your chances of survival are incredibly low as your force limit is capped at 6, and your economy can barely sustain having more than 6 yams, loincloths, and slightly sharpened spears. What's worse is that if you do ally Cuba or Yaka, they tend to rival each other, which will give you effectively only one ally against Congo, Luongo, and their other vassal, Nadongo. Any war started on your part that includes your only possible ally will have you outnumbered by at least 3 to 1, 
As if that wasn't bad enough, Tio also suffers the misfortune of sharing the abysmal Congolese national idea set. These provide improved fort defense in a country that has no business nor ability to afford them in the first place, reduced infantry costs, and reduced cultural conversion costs. If you want a challenging start and unlockable achievements, you should seriously reconsider picking this bottom tier nation and go with Congo instead. You can obtain the African power achievement by conquering the continent as the objectively superior Congo. Nearing the top of our list of worst countries in EU4 is the hilariously awful and unpronounceable nation of Betsimisaraka at number 2. Located in Madagascar, among other equally unpronounceable nations and cities, Betsimisaraka is so horrifyingly terrible that the developers have given them a national sailor modifier as their starting tradition. What's worse though, is that Betsimisaraka doesn't even start with feudalism, and is fetishist while surrounded by Sunni countries. Surely there must be some saving grace, right? How can a nation have increased garrison size and sailor maintenance ideas without having anything to make up for it? Well, there isn't. Instead, you get embargo efficiency and reduced morale for losing ships. Luckily for you, though, is that you will be losing all of your ships since you will have to beat both Mutapa and Kilwa's superior navies if you want to expand off of the underdeveloped and terrible island of Madagascar. My advice is to pick any other nation on Madagascar and avoid this terrible country if you would like to play a campaign in this region. Do you enjoy staring at a wall and watching paint dry? If so, you will love Haida and their neighbors, the worst and most boring countries in EU4 at number one on our list. If you thought that the Siberian tribal councils were bad, just wait until you see the amazing potential of the Alaskan One Province miners. Although all of Haida's neighbors are also depressing, Haida is marginally worse, as it starts off on an isolated Alaskan island and is thus the furthest Native American playable nation from European colonies, and, consequently, institutions and the ability to reform away from their terrible tribal government type. What this means, in practical terms, is that you will spend at least 200 years of in-game time at speed 5, migrating your way slowly southwards down the west coast of North America. If you manage to make it to Mexico or any other populated region before uninstalling your game or killing yourself, you might be able to finally reform your government and obtain institutions. If that sounds fun to you, good news, because Haida and the other Alaskan OPMs have surprisingly decent national ideas, include increasing army morale, discipline, diplomatic reputation, and an impressive plus 10% national goods modifier. There are nations, though, with far better ideas that don't require you to waste 200 in-game years, and I'd recommend anyone and everyone still watching this video to play literally any other country instead. Before finishing this video, I would also like to mention that you can create even worse nations by using Eldorado's Custom Nations feature. With this mechanic, you can make tribal nations with Native American technology and with amazing ideas like increasing sailor capacity, reducing naval maintenance modifiers, and unlocking female advisors. The absolute worst nation possible would be to create a nation in the isolated Falklands Islands with a native tech group. You can't build boats to get off the island, and you can't reform as no nation will ever border you. Good luck, and be sure to make the Falklands culture English for historical accuracy. I've also been getting a lot of questions in my videos asking what map mod I use, and the answer is the Graphical Map Improvements mod by Blairg. I will include a link to this mod in the details box of this video, and I use it for all of my campaigns and videos. I highly recommend it to anyone interested in improving the graphics of the game map. That concludes my top picks for the worst countries in Europe Universalis 4. What terrible countries have you played or seen? Have you played a campaign as any of these unfortunate states? Do you agree with my list? Let me know in the comment box below. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a like or a comment. These will really help the channel grow. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.